Dr. Sinclair, I understand the first word of IIH is idiopathic, which mm -hmm. means an unknown cause. But are you aware of any causes or associated conditions? Yes, well, first of all, when we diagnose the condition, we, we have to make sure we've excluded any secondary causes or other causes of IIH. So I was mentioning that we have to do the scan of the brain to exclude a, a, a clot in the vein. So we often do a CT venogram or an MR venogram. And then we also often ask some questions, and I think I may have been through these with you in the past, but we talk about whether you've had a history of taking any particular medications. So sometimes long-term use of particular antibiotics can precipitate IIH. Sometimes long-term use or high dose the high doses of certain vitamins, particularly vitamin A, can cause a condition a bit like IIH, so we want to exclude that. And we also ask people um, if they are anemic, and if we're not sure, we may test for it. And we're not talking about a little bit of borderline anemia, but we've seen patients with very profound anemia, who sometimes that can be treated and it will get rid of the raised brain pressure. So it's not a truly idiopathic intracranial hypertension, there's a sort of cause for why they've got their raised brain pressure. And we also sometimes see it in very poorly patients who have a lumbar puncture and have very abnormal cells in their lumbar puncture fluid which can essentially sort of prevent the amount of fluid that drains from the brain so strange conditions like malignant meningitis which you probably haven't heard of and and yes yeah, so there's some other conditions Guillain-Barre syndrome these kind of things which we would exclude before we would come to the conclusion it was truly idiopathic yeah But then when we think about the idiopathic intracranial hypertension, we think, well, why, why do people have it? And we've talked about how it's normally in women, normally of childbearing age, and it normally does seem to relate to being at increased weight. But we don't really know yet exactly what, those, um, what the reasons are why those factors can contribute to IIH. And a lot of research is going into that. But people have looked at whether there are high levels of vitamin A in IIH patients, but that doesn't seem to be backed up in the research at the moment. They've looked at whether it could be inflammation due to the, uh, um, the increased weight, but we haven't found that conclusively yet. And then something that we've got, people are researching now is the hormone profiles. Um, is there differences in hormones in IIH patients? So there's a lot of work going on really to try and understand why people get IIH and it, it isn't completely clear. So there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. We also know it can be associated with other conditions, so we sometimes see people with IIH having other conditions. Um, Ms. Mullen, do you want to talk a bit about that? Mm, so quite often, I mean, going back to the hormones, um, a number of our patients have polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, and we know that it's higher in an IIH population than a normal population. Um, but as uh, Dr. St. Clair says, there's a lot of associated conditions that may appear more common in IIH, but it's just the group of you know, young you women that we're looking at. Yeah. They're associated, yeah. but we don't at the know moment. Why. Yeah. It's difficult to know with some of those conditions if it's just a chance um, finding that both mm. the conditions are in a patient, and often you know, young female patients are susceptible to more than one type of disease. So it could be that it's a chance finding that yeah. some of these conditions occur in the same patient, and we don't know enough yet. Was there any other questions? Questions you had about conditions with IIH? I've heard um, Chiari and sleep apnea can be associated with IIH. Yes, so I can talk a bit about um, sleep apnea. That's an important thing to consider, and we often find that some of our patients may be at risk of sleep apnea because sleep apnea also occurs in people who tend to be at increased weight. And we have seen in some patients that having sleep apnea can potentially exacerbate their IIH. Can you tell me what sleep apnea is? Yeah, so sleep apnea is a condition where people may feel very fatigued or fall asleep during the day, so very tired, and at night they may be prone to snoring, but more than snoring, they may snore and then for a few seconds seem to not breathe or hold their breath and then sort of gasp and splutter a little bit as they gasp for a breath. So it's often something that the patient may not know, but their partner who's sharing a bed with them might, might appreciate. But it's this business of not having regular breathing at night, which may um, be related to the IIH. So we do sometimes screen for sleep apnea and we sometimes do questionnaires to see if people are at risk of that and if they are we may go on to do a formal test for sleep apnea which involves wearing a little monitor on your finger to see how well you breathe at night as well as sometimes some prongs up the nose to measure the flow of the breathing and some bands around the, the chest to see how your chest is expanding during the night. So not easy to sleep when you've got those on but actually it can give us quite a useful indicator as to whether somebody's got sleep apnea and then we can think about um, with the health 
help of our respiratory doctors whether we need to do anything about that. And then you mentioned about the Chiari. Well, that's difficult. So Chiari is quite a common thing um, to find on imaging, actually. So I run a, a headache service as well. And often we see people who have a, a Chiari just incidentally. So you might see one there. Um, and it may not be why the patient's actually poorly or unwell in your clinic, but then sometimes it might be. So you, if we see a Chiari on the scan in a patient with IIH, we look at it as a separate aspect, and we would look at to whether it's causing any problems or whether it's related at all. We don't think it's a cause of IIH, but it may be there. And we would look at whether it needed anything doing any further imaging and whether it could be you know, compounding the illness and making people feel worse. But there's not enough data to really know if it's a, if it's a, a more typical finding in IIH.